Hey everyone, welcome back to the Swift Arcade. I'm your host, Jonathan Vasperson. In this episode, we're gonna look at three really simple ways that you can edit and swipe cells in UI table view. We're going to look at how to put the UI table view in edit mode, which lets you select a cell like this and then delete it like this. We'll take a look at how to add swipeable actions. So you can either select a row and add actions from the left or the right. And then finally, we'll look at two different ways you can actually add cells to a table either directly with the form on the page itself or through a modal dialog, which does a full screen takeover and lets you add something from there. But first let's start with this very simple one, something called edit mode. So it turns out UI table view has lots of ways of editing cells and edit mode is a classic, probably one of the most simple ones. Basically what you do when you send a target action to the table view like this is you put the table into what's called edit mode and you're able to delete a row and it handles all the visuals and everything like this for you. It's really slick, it's really simple. And the trick to doing this is to send this method to your table view, set is editing equal true. And as soon as you do that, you get into this mode. So in this demo here, I have an edit button, which is just a bar button item in the upper right hand corner. When I click that, that puts it into this edit mode and I'm free to do things like delete and swipe. Now how the table view knows what to do when you click that button is handled down here. UI table views have these things called editing styles. And when you put it into edit mode, the style of this row becomes delete. So this method here, commit, is what gets called when you commit an action on this table view. And there's two commits we can do here. One is we can either delete, which is the one we just did, which is where I remove that game from my array of games and then I call delete rows at the index path for this given cell here. That's what happens here. Or if I was in an insert mode, I could do something like add another game to my collection. In this case, I could add Ms. Pac-Man. Now it's not immediately obvious how you get it into that insert mode, but basically what you do is you can change the styling for a given row with a function like this. So by default in edit mode, all your rows come back as default but we can change that to insert. By commenting in this section here and rerunning the application, we can now click this edit mode again, but you'll see here those red signs have been turned to plus green signs, which is insert. And if we hit insert now, it will add a game to the bottom of our list. A couple interesting things to note with edit mode. One is there's a lot of built-in affordances with this that work with other controls in UI kit like navigation bar. Let me show you what I mean. When I was first playing with this application, I created my own menu item bar and stuck it in the upper right hand corner here. But watch what happens if I comment out my menu button bar and comment in this one called edit button item. This is basically a button that's set up on the UI view controller that is built specifically for this edit mode functionality that I'm looking at using right now. And I just stumbled upon it by fluke. If I comment this in though and rerun the application, Watch what happens to that button in the upper right hand corner. It still says edit like my button did before, but now when I click edit, it changes it to done. And when I click done, it changes it back to edit. This is a really nice built-in affordance that comes with UI view controller built specifically for handling this situation in the navigation bar. So that's just one example of a built-in affordance that sometimes come with these things and how UI table views work with navigation bars. So that's edit mode, and that's one way we can play with editing cells on a table view. Now let's look at another called swipeable actions. In iOS 11, Apple introduced a new way to add actions to table views, and those are called swipeable actions, and they work like this. Before you could only have actions on the right-hand side, but with swipeable actions now, we have APIs that enable us to add actions to the trailing side of our table view cell or of the leading side of our table view cell. And these are basically where we configure our swipes. For instance, here we can define an action called delete so that when we do a trailing action swipe, we can make this delete action come up here. This is this action, delete, with the ability to also add an image. In this case, I'm using uh, SF symbols. I've added a trash can. And it's a handler in here that gets invoked when users tap that button. So in this case, we are going to delete or remove the game from my games array. And also we're gonna delete it from our table view, calling that same method before delete rows at index path. And that's all there is to it. It's a really nice, elegant way of adding actions to table views. 
Here's the one for swipe at the bottom down here where we swipe left. This is a leading action. So here when we swipe leading, we can add one or many different actions down here, pass back in this array. And in this case, I've added a paper clip and I've called a document and I'm not doing anything on this action. You can see how we can swipe either left or right. And that's just another really elegant way we can add actions to our table view cells and have them do interesting things. Now where things get a little more interesting with table view cells is how to handle inserts. Because you've got a couple things to take into account of here. One, what's the UI or experience? How do you want to actually enable people to insert something into a table view? And then two, what's the best way to implement that? Let's quickly look at two different ways you can insert a row into a table view cell. First up, let's just look at form on the page. You could have your table view down here, have your form directly onto the page, and then simply add your table view cell, taking the content from this text field, and via target action, call in the appropriate method on your table view, and add that directly into your table view cell on your view. So basically here we have an add button. Note it is lazy var so that this can be instantiated lazily and we can add this target action after. And when this add button is pressed, what we do is we just go ahead and do the work to add it into the cell directly. So we read the text from the text field. We update our model. In this case, it's an array that contains the list of strings representing our games. And then here's the magic right here. We get our index path. And with these three lines of code, this is how we can safely insert into the table view. We call begin updates, insert rows, and then end updates. This can also be used for batch updates, which we're not covering here. But basically, this is a very simple way of taking some text, adding it into a table view, and getting those nice animations that just make it all work. So that's one way you can insert a cell into a table view cell. Let's now look at another way of doing this, one using a modal view controller. So doing the exact same thing, only coming in modally, what we can do now is when we hit that Add button, we can make this a full screen takeover. The difference here is we don't have the form embedded right in the view controller. Here we're adding a more full screen takeover. And this is great if you've got more forms you want users to fill in. It's a little bit more of a direct action. We're asking them to basically fill out this form in order to insert uh, a table view. And if we go ahead and do that and hit Save, that is also another way of adding to a table view controller. Let's take a look and see how that works. So looking at our modal view controller, it's the exact same add button here. Only now if we go look and see what this target action does, when the add game is tapped, it presents a brand new view controller. In this case, the save game view controller. This is that modal that just takes over uh, the view here by going like this. And here you can just see we have, how we have our save and cancel buttons. And basically the way we're communicating back to our previous view controller is just with protocol delegate. And if you need a refresher on that, feel free to click the link up there. We covered that a few episodes ago. But basically when save button is pressed here, we are going to call our delegate and tell it that we're adding a game and then dismiss the view controller. And if we're gonna cancel, we just hit dismiss here. So what happens back in our modal view controller when we get that call is we call this add game method ourselves which go ahead and does the exact same thing it did in the previous example. We add the game to our uh, data model, in this case, our array, and then we do those three line inserts to add it to the table view. And that's it, just another way of adding or inserting a cell into a table view, but this one using a full modal takeover. Now we've just scratched the surface with what you can do with UI table view cells here, and there's lots of things we haven't covered. Batch updates, reordering cells, this can get really complicated really quickly. And one of the biggest sources of bugs in apps is trying to keep your model data in sync with what's going on with your table view cell. In fact, this was such a problem, Apple's created a new API called a diffable data source, which I hope to cover in a future episode. But this will give us enough just to build some simple examples and gives you just a taste of some of the things you can do with UI table view cells. Okay, thanks for coming everyone. Have a great day and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.